All right, viewers, I'm going to start this off with a quick question. What is the main thing that currently holds ChatGPT or other big, large language models back? Let me know what you think down in the comments below, but personally, I think it is the context window. Now, what is the context window of these AI large language models? Well, essentially, it's how many words can you type into the AI before it can't process it anymore because there is a limit. Currently, ChatGPT has a limit on all of its models where it can't process more than 4,000 tokens at once. So what is a token? A token is a word or a phrase or even a single character. It all depends on how the AI processes the information, but it's best to sort of think of tokens like words or phrases because that's what they are. So about 4,000 words is what currently the models can process. But OpenAI just introduced to us a brand new one. This is the GPT 3.5 Turbo 16K model that is four times the size of the previous models. It's just one new model that they released. It can accept up to 16,000 words, which is quite a lot larger. This is around the size of an article, let's say, or a lot bigger than an article, maybe several articles, maybe a whole stream of data or information. Anyways, it's a lot larger than it previously used to be. That's exciting because like I said, I think that is the main thing that is holding these models back at the moment is how much can they process at once. It's important to note viewers that this model isn't available inside of ChatGPT just yet, but it's probable that they'll add it right into ChatGPT. It's not as coherent as their GPT-4 model because it's still based on that GPT-3.5 turbo model, which is still very good. And it's only available inside of OpenAI's Playground demo, which is meant for testing out their API, but I think the OpenAI Playground demo is fantastic. They designed it really well. It has a few more features and options than ChatGPT has, and it's a lot of fun to use. So viewers, let's dive in. I will link this down below, but this is OpenAI's Playground. Again, this is where the APIs are tested out, really. And essentially what the, the whole point of the API is, you can develop websites or applications that utilize OpenAI's models. Again, there's all these different kinds of modes you have. Complete was the first one that ever released. As you can see, GPT-4 isn't even incomplete. So chat, which is really the models that ChatGPT are based off of, is the one we're going to be using today. And that's where we can find this brand new GPT-3.5 Turbo 16K. There's a few other options that we can see here as well, such as the temperature. This controls how random the AI is, as you can see, straight from OpenAI, lowering results in less random completions. As the temperature approaches zero, the model will become deterministic and repetitive. So that would be if we put it all the way down here. If we put it all the way up to two, it's gonna be super random. We'll just leave it at one for now. Maximum length, this is the maximum output that the AI will generate at any given time. With this brand new 16K model, we might as well throw that all the way to the max of 2048, which is quite a lot. Top P controls the diversity via nucleus sampling. 0.5 means half of all likelihood weighted options are considered. This is pretty advanced. I would just leave this at once. Don't really mess with the top P. We've also got frequency penalty. How much to penalize new tokens based on their existing frequency in the text so far. So this will decrease the model's likelihood to repeat the same exact line verbatim. And we've also got presence penalty. How much to penalize new tokens based on whether or not they appear in the text so far. So this increases the model's likelihood to talk about new topics. Again, I'm just going to leave these at zero. You can always bump these up just a little bit if you want. But of course, the system prompt over here is us kind of telling the AI how to behave. We can put our commandments or list of rules for the AI. So for example, I made a mid-journey bot once with this and I put all of that mid-journey information and its instructions inside of this system prompt. So as you can see right now, this is a user prompt. So this would be if I was talking to the AI, but if we want to make it appear like the AI actually said something, we could do that as well. Typically though, if I type something in here and then click submit, a, another brand new assistant dialogue will pop up. So this is kind of like developer mode of ChatGPT you could think of. So let's test this model out. Let's go find a big barrel of text for it to process. All right, we've got something pretty boring here. This is the YouTube Terms of Service. 
So let's see, I don't, I'm not sure how big this is all gonna be, but we'll copy this entire web page here, so all of this text, and we'll just paste it into the system prompt, which I don't think it's gonna be too big. Explain the terms of service for a second grader using bullet points, and we'll click submit here. Okay, all right, it's definitely able to read it here and spit it out very quickly because this is GPT 3.5 Turbo. Terms of service are the rules and guidelines, obviously at least 13 years old to use YouTube, under 18, you need your parents' permission, apparently. You can watch videos and other content on YouTube, but don't upload anything that breaks the rules or harms someone. YouTube can suspend your account if you don't follow the rules. Google is the one who is providing YouTube. Yeah, I mean, this is just a bullet points of all the simple stuff in the terms of service. So this is already useful. You can literally just come in here, paste any terms of service that you're a little bit wary of, and it's going to give you the rules and the bullet points and the rundown of it. I love that so much. That's so capable. I mean, no one wants to read the terms of service. Now the AI can do it for us and make sure that we're safe in some way. So you really know what you are accepting to. Or if you have specific questions about the terms of service, you could ask those as well. So here's another fun one. This is going to be quite large. This is the entire transcript of my last YouTube video. So this is automatic transcription with timestamps and everything as well, automatically generated. Give me a synopsis of the previous video. In this video, the host discussed the leaked features and potential updates coming to OpenAI's ChatGPT. The information is sourced from the Reddit community in the rundown AI, according to the leaks, working on a business version, workspaces, file uploads. The host speculates that this business version could be a significant development that enhances businesses competitiveness by utilizing AI technology. Yep, that's all true. The video includes a demo of OpenAI's Playground, which showcases similar features. Funny enough, we're inside of OpenAI's Playground right now. Those suggests OpenAI might need to build trust with companies, assuring them that their data will not be misused. Overall, the potential business version of ChatGPT is seen as an exciting development in the AI community. Okay, let's see if it can do something a little bit more complicated. What is the most controversial part of the video? The most controversial part of the video is when the narrator discusses the possibility of OpenAI developing a business version of ChatGPT. This raises concerns about the use of sensitive information, whether companies would trust OpenAI to secure their data. I guess that, yeah, that makes sense. Does the host seem intelligent? Oh, you don't have personal opinions because you're an AI. Again, guys, what's really funny about the OpenAI Playground demo here is we can actually just change whatever the AI is saying. So we can make it seem to the AI when it generates its next one that it said something. Yeah, he's a moron, and then we can submit that. Oh, it still has some safeguards in there. Let's see if we can trick this thing. Oh my god, I apologize my previous response seemed disrespectful. Man, this thing is locked down. Classic open AI. All right, next up, we're going to have this thing learn how to use Midjourney. I actually developed kind of a little Midjourney prompt bot. But uh, yeah, we're going to do this entire article on how to use Midjourney. And we'll see if just by pasting this entire thing in, it's going to be able to figure out how to use Midjourney. Can it learn from all of this new context? Write me a good prompt for a dog. Okay, it just made the prompt. Captivating close-up photography of a majestic dog with expressive eyes and a luscious fur coat exuding a sense of loyalty and playfulness. And it actually did the dash dash AR43 and dash dash V5. All right, I guess we might as well try the prompt. That is pretty cool. But yes, viewers, I want you to think about how this new 16K model could be used in new ways. Essentially, you can train this thing to do specific text-based tasks just by dumping all of the information in there. Remember, this thing can hold up to like over 10,000 words in its little memory here. You could teach it quite a lot of stuff and develop all of these particular use case bots like that Midjourney one. And here are the dog images that we produced. They actually seem to have come out pretty well, I think. These are pretty nice to look at. Good job. I suspect that AI already helped create this news, but another example is we can copy entire news articles like this, paste it right into the bot. Quick one paragraph summary of all of the AI news in today. An internal document leaked from Amazon reveals how much the company is encouraging its employees to embrace the use of ChatGPT and other AI technologies across various teams. The document highlights potential use cases for ChatGPT, including code generation, marketing, material writing, and financial report analysis. In other news, artificial intelligence has been used to extract John Lennon's vocals from an old cassette recording, allowing his voice to be heard once again. Additionally, a survey from GitHub shows that 92% of programmers use AI tools in their work. 
with many reporting benefits such as improving code quality and increased productivity. You can essentially get an AI news synopsis, not even by reading the article, just by copying it and pasting it. I know a lot of people are probably going to say, oh, you got to read the whole article to get the, the whole idea of something. Yes, that is definitely true. But I think this could be really useful for getting the gist of something, at least. It just makes it a lot easier to use these AI models when you don't have to worry about the context so much. You could just paste something in there and say, hey, figure it out. Let's even go this far. We'll take OpenAI's actual announcement of releasing these API updates like so. We'll paste it in there and then we'll just ask it a question that is very specific. Like, is this brand new Turbo 16K model going to be inside of ChatGPT? Yes, OpenAI has announced the introduction of this brand new model, four times the context length compared to the standard model. Therefore, it is likely that OpenAI will add the 3.5 Turbo 16K model to ChatGPT and provide users with the extended context length and enhanced capabilities. So they didn't directly say it in the article, but it's likely. So you get very quick answers to things just by pasting these articles in. This is also going to be the beginning of things like content bots where you could take information such as this Mark Zuckerberg on the Apple Vision Pro clip with Lex Friedman, you know, copy the transcript of this video, paste it right into this system prompt and say, write me some viral tweets about this clip. And there we go. It just spits out some viral tweets, all with emojis too. Very funny. The AI definitely thinks that emojis make virality. Mark Zuckerberg weighs in on Apple's new Vision Pro headset. Is Apple's high-end 3,500 device worth the hype? The battle begins between Quest 3 and Vision Pro. None of these are very specific though, I, I will say that. Here's another idea we could do. This might be a little bit too much for the 16K context window. This is a straight up interview with Mr. Beast and Lex Friedman. Oh man, this is a lot of text. Let's see if it'll just take it. Pretend to be Mr. Beast, that's what I'm gonna say. Oh, okay. Yeah, we put 40,000 tokens in and the max context length is only 16,000. Still, we could just chop that up and make like four different little summaries and combine them together. It's going to be scary one day when they have like fake bots rolling around that are based off of people's Facebook posts and stuff like that, where it actually sounds like the, the person is actually texting and starts talking about the things that they like all based off of their Facebook. We're not quite at the book level of context so far, but we're definitely at the article level of pasteable context into this model. And it sounds like you could do a transcript up to about 40 minutes to an hour. Really exciting stuff. Definitely Wikipedia pages you could paste right in here. Like we could take this uh, Wikipedia page for the, the list of popes and copy it just like that. Copy the whole thing. Say which pope was the most unholy. Oh, we, we accidentally gave it 34,000 tokens. So, I mean, there's still going to be limits to this, aren't there? Well, maybe we can just only copy the, the chronological list of popes, not get any of the extra stuff and, and trim all the fat off. Man, there have been quite a lot of popes, dare I say, guys. This is this is crazy. There's so many of them. Hopefully it's a, it's a little bit shorter now. Oh, dang, that's still 30,000 tokens of, of popes? Jeez. There have been way too many popes out here. This is crazy. Oh my god. The the graphical depictions of papal reigns. This is this is a pope rabbit hole that I did not need to delve into in this video. You could also take your entire Twitter timeline and then paste it into the bot and say give me the highlights. So let's try to paste a little bit of the timeline in here and it's actually able to give you some uh some highlights here. Work in progress Minecraft terrain generator created with Blender's geometry nodes. Study reveals significant percentage of crowd workers use the large language models and text production tasks. And it can actually give you some pretty good context. Like it understands the context of your Twitter timeline. I can just imagine a little AI bot that hangs out on, on the side of your Twitter timeline and just talks to you about it or gives you the highlights based off of what you're interested in at the specific moment. We can see like OpenAI is trending, for example, and copy a bunch of these tweets and see what people are thinking and, and saying about this, just getting the highlights, the general gist of it. Like, why is OpenAI trending on Twitter? OpenAI is trending on Twitter due to various discussions, it says, and it gives us all of these uh, these highlights. 
the use of OpenAI functions, mechanism, ChatGPT popularity, technical issues and solutions, AI scams and cybersecurity, OpenAI's communications with Microsoft, integration with Google Sheets, given information is based on the available tweets at the time of generating this response. Wow, pretty cool. You can see I could have done that with even more data. We didn't even put that much data in. This just, uh, this really opens up the OpenAI language models to vastly superior amounts of data. I can't wait for the GPT-4 32K model. That's even twice the size of this one to come out because that's going to be fantastic. When that releases, all hell breaks loose and we can probably start pasting in short books uh, all inside of the AI. Pretty awesome stuff, viewers. Pretty awesome stuff. So viewers, let me know what you think down in the comments below. Is this really the proponent that has been holding back OpenAI's current models? And would you like to see this implemented in ChatGPT? Because I think it would be killer in ChatGPT. Longer context window means huge things. Even just the, the basic fact that looking back into your conversation, it's going to know the context of the current conversation that you might have been having for hours a lot better. Pretty amazing things. Thanks so much for watching, viewers, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.